For the first time in weeks since the scarcity of premium motor spirits, popularly called petrol, began, the federal government opened up and declared on Wednesday that there was no plan to increase the pump price of petrol, at least during the Yuletide season. However, the government's comments came amid a worsening and persistent fuel scarcity, which spread further on Wednesday across the country. Also, the cost of the commodity rose to as high as 285 naira per litre in some filling stations in Abuja. Oil marketers stated that black market costs of petrol in Lagos had risen to about 450 naira per litre, while it sold for more than that price in some other states. But the government disclosed on Wednesday that there was fuel supply stock that could last the country for 34 days. On the line, 34 days. Now, as concerned around fuel or concerns around fuel and as the supply heightened, the federal government declared that it had no plan to increase fuel or petrol uh, price, describing comments on PMS price and its availability as speculations. Well, joining us to break this down are, of course, um, uh, normal Nigerians. This uh, evening, we have Daya Kayade, who's a political analyst, and Sonny. Maduka, who's also a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure that both gentlemen, you all have been either stuck at some feeling station queue or you've all been unable to make it to where you were going because you couldn't find a vehicle because there are no vehicles um, to, to see because they're all queuing up to get fuel. But I'm sure one way or the other, this situation has caught up with you. But I'll start with you, um, Mr. M Mr. Sonny Madika. It's very interesting that the federal government took this long to break, um, you know, um, voice on this matter because they had not spoken about it. Um, we had seen a similar case some time ago, and then that was blamed on the flooding, uh, that some of the trucks were stuck somewhere in Lokoja and they were unable to come this way. Here we are again, weeks later, into the Yuletide season. And don't forget, this is the same country where the NNPC has not remitted a cover into the federal coffers. What exactly do you think is going on in our oil sector right now? Well, Anne is, um, is a syndicated uh, uh, you know, fraud. Let me put it that way. And of course, if you are looking at the promises of this government, you will miss it. Because this government has never lived up to its promises since 2015. Uh, when they came in, I remember their fuel price was uh, around 87. And they, they, they told Nigerians that they are not going to increase. And just like that, we had it 145, from 145, 160. I think uh, um, the problem we're having really is that the government has never been sincere. Tell Nigerians the truth about issues. And these tactics of poor scarcity prior to price increase, it has never helped an ordinary man. And we have always had this particular policy guideline by the government. And I was just asking myself, why don't you change tactics? Because any time government wants to increase, the tendency is that you are going to have what we are having today. Yesterday, I went out, I drove everywhere, I couldn't get any fuel. In fact, the fuel attenders were making money out of it. Even for Jerry can they have to collect 500. I said, I'm not paying anything. I just have to take back my car. And I keep asking my, I said, where is this patriotism amongst our, uh, amongst our Nigerians? We have uh, immigration. We have police. We have customs. We have, I mean, manning our, course, our borders. Still, these products are finding their way outside. Two, how can somebody tell me as of today that Nigeria is consuming 60 million liters of fuel when the country that has the same population with us are consuming less than 30 million? What happened? So that's why I call it syndicated fraud sector. Look, we have a, a minister of petroleum, our president. He has never said anything about petroleum problem or crisis in this country. Just recently, I've asked somebody, we spend a lot on the revitalization or rehabilitation of Bodakot refinery, Wari refinery, even Kaduna refinery. 
What happened to the monies we spent there? Why do we have to spend over 30 billion naira in Kaduna refinery that is not working? So everything about petroleum sector has become a gangster kind of. Why is somebody doing this? And let me tell you, and this problem, this conspiracy of subjecting the, the Nigerians into hardship didn't start today. In, 19, in 1973, Gowan increased one price from six Kobo to eight Kobo 45. Gowan, when Moritala came, Moritala increased it to nine Kobo. And when OBJ first time came, he increased it to 15 Kobo. And of course, when Shagari came, he jumped start to 20 Kobo. And then when IBB, jumped in, it increased to 70 Kobo. OBJ second coming, jumped it from 70 Kobo to 75 Naira. Look at the gap. The only person that has the interest of Nigerians up to today that I look up and I say that's the only person I can call my president is President Yaradua, who came in and reduced the pump price from 75 to 65 Naira. But when Jonathan came, the spree continue. What is it that the ordinary Nigerian can benefit in this country? This is what God has given to us. Why can't we benefit from it? Why is it that we keep on saying the same thing, blaming games? Is there no way we can have what I call strategic thinking process? Is there no way we can have a planned process whereby we can think about it uh, today, we can think about tomorrow? Why is it that everything we keep on blaming, we keep on giving excuses? And for me, like I used to tell you, every excuse to me is a lie. Okay. We must start like a, a nation and do things right. Okay. All right. Let me let me come to you, Mr. Kayade. Um, he made he, he raised an interesting point about the fact that um, uh, too many questions, uh, you know, have been raised as a result of this. And that the fact that Mr. President seems to be very tight-lipped about this, being that Mr. President is our Minister for Petroleum. But then, uh, recently we've also seen that there's this continuous um, cut and change or name change for the NNPC keeps getting rechristened for one reason or the other. But um, the Ipman... Um, controller operations, um, Mike Osato, you recently said that subsidy is enabling smuggling, long queues, and he's asking that there be some form of deregulation. Do you think that subsidy is also a major problem that we're facing in this country? Yeah, thank, thank, thank you, Pat, for, for having me and for bringing all this kind of the discourse at this point in time. Mm -hmm. You see, let me start this video. The only meeting substance in this nation or in any economy is energy and power. Mm -hmm. And all these two add. We, we Nigerians have been changed when it comes to this two. And then when you now look at where more budgetary allocation are going to instill on this too. So the question now is why? Now let us now limit our discussion to energy, which has to do with petrol, diesel, and all that. When you look at our our ability to upgrade our manufacturing industry, to increase our GDP. To ensure uh, free flow transportation for the people, to ensure that people live a meaningful standard of living, it all depends on this uh, 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 energy. But then, we find out that each day that breaks comes with its own complexities and problems on this. Presently, NNPC name of things. And they, they realized a lot of things there. And I came out to tell them, look, if you are changing this name of NNPC, it is not my own problem. But to what extent is it going to solve our energy problem? 
to what extent if we're going to ensure that all these refineries are working to be able to forestall or ameliorate the incessant scarcity of wealth in Nigeria. To what extent are you going to bring the bounds? Uh, so many people have been moving refineries here and there. But look at where we are now. Rather, rather, it is a kind of a strategy to be siphoning our common wealth. Imagine if a lot of telling me that I think that, that they are not the one increasing uh, 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 for prices. And then somebody asked in any case, you say, look, uh, so people are diverting uh, this uh, where so people are smuggling this way, that's why we are having this problem. So who let's say, is it you and or me that are that are giving access to this smuggling and uh, uh, and uh, how do I put it now? Is it not them? Well, you know, why well, well, we not all in this country when even the other customs was given names as regards those people that have been siphoning all these products in this same country? I think the chief of the, one of these service chiefs said the same thing. Where are we? Why are we not deceiving ourselves? Why is government further increasing the gap, the 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 huge gap between them and we before you are? Now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, more prices are now jumped, now jumped from one one seventy five. To 250, to 260. Mm -hmm. The one I bought last week, which I'm now using little by little, 30 meters, 30 meters. I paid, I paid 8,000 to buy 30 meters. And that's the truth. So where do we go from here? Everything as against this government is just all promises cancelled. And you're not becoming to be telling us lies. I, I, I love, I love the invitation that, uh, that my co, my co, uh, visitor to your program this and I said, look at the way, look at the way, uh, uh, government has been increasing the pump price over the years. Except Yara Dua, that reduces. Was Yara Dua having two heads to be able to know that yes, what we are paying for is too high. And look at this government when, 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 when they were in the opposition. They were telling us that, I mean, that uh, uh, subsidy was a scam. Who is now a scammer? I don't know a scammer. I don't know scammer right now. Telling us that they are going to reduce the price to 45 naira. Is it 45 naira now? If you know the answer, the first of all, the first of all, it's going to 141. I'm, I'm curious. I want to quickly, Kaede, I, I want to quickly I come in. I want to come in there, Mr. Kayade. Talking about the issues that you have raised, whether it be the issue of the oil vessel that was found and destroyed at sea by the army and said that there was no need for an investigation, or whether it be the issue of the you know stolen crude, etc., etc. I'm, tr I'm, tr I'm trying to understand, why is this so highly politicized? Why are we making it more of a political issue as opposed to um, getting the right things done? Again, as we speak, the former um, party chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomole, has said that the ongoing fuel scarcity is as a result of the fact that the PDP, um, you know, caused some of the basic, uh, basic problems. In fact, he's blaming the People's Democratic Party for the ongoing fuel scarcity. Why are we politicizing it? You see, on the on the part of the uh, Mole, between you and me, I will just I will just cover a statement with a blank, I mean with a black, a black blanket. Because he has been one of the problems in this country when he was the when he was the labor leader. But let us the every Nigerians we are aware of what happened there. But don't let us open it. Now go back to that uh, bond vessel that, that was caught for bunkering. 
Why, why did they burn that vessel? It's not because some information needed to be covered. You have not done any investigation, for goodness sake. When you catch a thief, do you kill the thief? Or you first of all apprehend such a thief mm. and then do a lot of investigation on, on, on such a person? And then you cut that, you burn the, the vessel. Okay. Is it for you to cover up some uh, information as to that go behind the bunker? So what, are, what, what information do we have about you today? Well, I, I, think, I think that that's where the question mark is. Of, but but, but uh, because, uh, because we do not have too much time, Mr. Kayadi, I'm going to quickly sw switch to uh, Mr. Maduka as we wrap up. Where do we go from here, Mr. Maduka? Because it's very interesting, all of the things that we see play out on a daily basis. Questions asked, no answers, Nigerians in limbo. We're gradually getting into election season, as we, uh, in closing, because we're out of time. Where do we go from here? Will this ever be a thing of the past? Yeah, it will be a, a thing of the past when the government is sincere. I think Nigerians need to a sincere government. Secondly, we need to liberalize the uh, downstream sector. License those big companies that can bring in the product. As of today, it's only an NPC. It's not sustainable. They cannot do it. This, you're talking about a capitalist economy. It cannot be monopolistic. And that's what we are practicing. If we want to say we are capitalist or we are a commercialized uh, you know, country, you have to liberalize certain areas so that people can go in and buy these products. Mm. And uh, secondly, we need to actually ask questions. Why should we build a refinery in Niger Republic and not in Nigeria? That is the question we need to ask because it's one thing to cover something. It's another thing to understand the implication of covering it. The government should come out clean and tell us because as at now what they are waiting is Dangote. If Dangote didn't come on stream by next year, what happens? Well, we need to have a strategy, long, short term, mid mid term, and you know long term pro process or planning process, whereby we cannot continue with this. We have overdone this. It's becoming a recurrent decimal. Okay. We can't keep on blaming. Look at what he's talking about blaming PDP. That has always been this government uh, right from the one is always blaming. What are you putting on the table for us to see that you're working? You will keep on blaming, and at the end of it, we are going down the drain. We are on an emergency room right now in Nigeria, and it's unfortunate we need people that can come out and do it. And then let me come to the last person. Let's put go. people. Let's put people who are really expert in whatever we want to do. Mary should be a watchword in this country. Thank All you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh Dayo Kayade is a political analyst, uh, analyst and so is uh, Sunny Madika. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Unfortunately, time is not our friend, but thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank yes, you very much. All right. And that's the show tonight. Thank you, everybody, for being part of the conversation. Don't forget, INEC has displayed its voters register. Go to your local government area and check for your name and your information. If you haven't picked up your PVC, please make sure you do that because that is your passport, like I always say, to a new Nigeria. I'm Mary Anna Kona. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.